So I'm uh, Alex Blanks, I'm a senior archaeologist at um, MOLA. Um, I'm going to be talking about our ongoing excavations at uh, Barn Elms. Um, it's Tideway Site 4 for me, it's a bit of a sort of competition in the office how many you do. So I was at Kirtling Street doing the night shifts, um, which was interesting, and uh, Chambers Wharf as well. Okay, so, um, so what's an oppidum? Uh, that's what we're going to be talking about. So very simply, large Iron Age fortified structure, somewhat like that. Um, they, these would be centres for trade and administration. They're found uh, throughout Europe um, in the Iron Age. Um, so the site itself, um, <coughs> yeah. Um, so um, we're in Barn Elms, so it's on the south of the river um, by Hammersmith, um, over there is the Fulham football ground, um, that's the site itself there, and you can see that sort of green patch is the uh, London Wetland Centre, um, that's a nicer shot of it, and it's, it's a nice, um, nice illustration of um, what the landscape would look like um, at the time in, in the Iron Age and, and throughout prehistory south of the river. So you've got these little islands or islets um, with waterways and sort of like general sort of marshy uh, environment. Um, so why Barn Elms? Um, the Wandsworth Historical Society carried out excavations there in 1974 couple of uh, fairly small trenches uh, producing Iron Age pits and post holes uh, containing daub, pottery, uh, burnt flints and even quern stones. Um, a few years later, Mola carried out uh, evaluation trenches, um, uh, which again we found very similar things, pits, post holes, um, Iron Age, more Iron Age um, material basically. And finally, finds from the Thames. Um, so these things, everyone's probably quite familiar with. Uh, we've got the Wandsworth shield there, the um, bat, uh, sorry, the Waterloo helmet, and the Battersea, Battersea shield. Um, uh, deposited what we think now um, uh, intentionally. Um, so it wasn't anything to do with uh, battles or anything like that. Uh, I think. I'm sort of an archaeologist, so I kind of uh, shun the, the ritual word, but I don't think there's any other, <laughs> any other word for it, really. Um, so from the PAS, uh, closer to the site, from Putney, um, we've got um, uh, this, this really nice uh, Iron Age coin hoard and numerous individual coin finds uh, very close to, to uh, Barn Elms itself um, along the Putney foreshore. Um, so the areas of excavation, um, as Jack sort of caught everyone up to speed with uh, the Tideway project in general, this is another um, uh, site that's going to be feeding into the main sewer and um, this circle here, uh, these are all areas we've excavated so far. Um, so the, the circle is another um, shaft going down 30 metres this time, so it's quite a small one compared to Curling Street and James Wharf. Um, and the other areas are sort of ancillary buildings that they need to um, do for the uh, area. So this is what we've uncovered so far from prehistoric period. Um, these blue lines are big ditches um, converging at this point, they're about the same sort of depth and, and same sort of fills, so we think they were um, from the same period, um, used at the same time. The little black uh, brown spots, uh, those are all post holes, and we've had, uh, I think, a, about 100 so far, um, and you can kind of see what, um, what we're starting to piece together um, in post X is the phasing of all those post holes. So we've clearly got evidence of lots of structures, lots of roundhouses, and you can see um, sort of curves and things like that, um, and that's kind of what we're looking at now. Um, so this is the ditch, um, it's a rather messy shot from site, um, but you can see each one of those steps um, is 50 centimetres, and with the overlying layers that we excavated, we're talking about two metres deep, 
um, and probably double that wide. Um, this is this is in the, the main circular shaft on the site. Um, um, that that sort of tin there, those two metal tins are um, environmental samples. So again, we're going to be looking at things like pollen um, and various other um, environmental things to tell us about how the ditch was filled, um, what the environment around it was when it was open. Um, that's a that's a closer closer shot of it. Um, we think it naturally infilled um, at the moment. There's not um, there's not a huge sort of level of stratigraphy um, in the ditch itself compared to um, other sites in London that are very heavily stratified and you can see very very clear you know stripy archaeology. Um, but nonetheless, it's a very imposing structure. Um, you can see here a couple of the pits which weren't illustrated on the. Um, on the digitization uh, plan, because it would have been, it would have looked too messy essentially. But we had a lot of these um, large, rectangular, roughly um, what we think are storage pits, um, probably about two meters long and about a meter wide was the average. Uh, sorry, a meter deep. Um, they'd often have a uh, layer on the inside of a sort of, of uh, brick earth clay. Um, making them watertight because most of them were going down into the natural gravels, meaning that you know if you were using them as a storage pit, they wouldn't work. So, so we think they were lined with clay, um, probably for the purposes of, of putting food in in vessels yeah, inside them. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a couple more you can see. Um, really large things and they're sort of in certain areas on the site um, so we've already got an idea of um, deline delineation of land use um, in this settlement. Here's an example of uh, some of the post holes and like everything on this site they're big um, probably about 50 centimetres deep about 30 wide um, a lot of them were actually double post holes so you'd get um, a sort of stepped profile where two large posts would have been placed in them um, which is interesting because it gives us a lot of information about the actual um, building techniques of, of uh, roundhouses in this period um, it's it's something I hadn't encountered before um, so it's quite interesting in that regard um, the white buckets at the back there um, are some of the seemingly hundreds of environmental samples we took um, from these post holes. Um, and those are very important because uh, in a lot of them, we had large amounts of charcoal and also daub um, with the impressions of uh, water work in them from, from the walls, essentially, of the, of the roundhouses, which is really nice. Um, it was probably the first tideway site I did where we didn't get... Um, good enough levels of preservation to, to actually get timbers, um, but we got the sort of um, the shadows of them, which is quite nice. Um, so again, as I say, these are, these are very large uh, post holes and very regular. And there's an illustration of our supervisor um, showing you how deep most of them were. Um, so the finds, um, these are probably two of the, the star finds from site. Um, on the left here is a, um, an Iron Age coin, uh, a potin, um, which is made from copper alloy. Um, you can see the casting flanges on both sides. Um, and it's a very stylized design, um, a so-called celticized version of a Roman coin, an earlier Roman coin, with um, a depiction of Apollo on one side and a, a seated <coughs> bull on the other. Um, on the far side, we've got um, a spearhead, an iron spear spearhead. Uh, in three pieces. Um, it was like that when I found it with the mattock, um, <laughs> I promise. Um, but that again, that's a really nice um, uh, sort of depiction of um, possible what was going on at the site. So there was clearly evidence of you know, military involvement or your guess is as good as mine at this point. Um, pottery. So we had a lot of pottery from this site. Um, really nice stuff. Um, fine wares, as well as coarser, um, most of it Iron Age like this. We've got a, the, the two lower ones are examples of the decorated um, types we got. And you see this nice linear design, 
the bottom one, it's not a very good photo, but you can kind of see triangles with, with little dots inside them, um, which uh, um, we've seen similar types uh, from other sites in southern England. Um, on the top right is um, some example of a small amount of Roman pottery, which we got on the site, which gives us a nice sort of clue um, to trade with the Roman Empire. Um, they, they most likely predate uh, the Roman occupation of Britain, um, but they show that trade was going on with the Roman Empire and southern, if not all of Britain as well. <coughs> and uh, flints. So we got a lot of flint work as well, um, perhaps surprisingly from the site, um, all from the same features, um, the same pits, post holes um, and the ditch. Um, we don't think these are Iron Age. Um, they're, they're, we got, from the evaluation, we got um, upper Paleolithic long blades. We got um, a lot of this type of flint, which are, there's no scale on here, but they're, they're all pretty small. Um, we think probably Mesolithic or uh, perhaps early Neolithic. Um, they display quite an advanced level of uh, napping technology. Um, so there was clearly um, prehist earlier prehistoric um, occupation around this area, which is which is kind of what we thought on a on a on a floodplain. Um, and um, just just going back, uh, I was going to say about the. Um, London in general um, during the Iron Age, um, things like the Battersea Shield and, and uh, these these nice um, uh, objects. We, we've got about half of the high status um, metal objects in Britain come from come from Greater London, usually the Thames, but we've got very little um, evidence of occupation in the city, leading a lot of people to think that. Um, it, it wasn't highly um, populated. Um, we've got those large oppidum um, throughout southern Britain and, and Europe, but very little evidence in London. So it's it's a nice um, a nice site to do because it kind of adds a little key to, to what we've been finding on the river um, and showing London's um, prehistoric uh, beginnings, maybe. Um, so is it an oppidum? is the question. <laughs> I think so. Um, we've got huge boundary ditches. Um, not, not the sort of things that you'd find as um, you know, normal land divides or, or even drainage. So there's, there's clearly, um, it might not be the complete reason for them, but a, a defensive aspect to these features. We've got obvious settlement. We've got a number of round houses. Um, we don't know how many at the moment, but from that from that nice picture where we saw the curve there, we had a number of alignments like that, um, suggesting various um, levels of phases. Um, the destruction layers of um, burnt daub um, and charcoal um, suggest we've got um, <coughs> either fires or deliberate destruction of roundhouses, other phases. We've even got pits cut into them as, as later phases and that sort of thing. Um, and high status artifacts. Now this one is a bit, um, we're not sure about this yet. We're, we're currently analysing the pottery and um, seeing whether that can actually tell us whether these, the assemblage we've got is, is, is truly sort of something unusual. <coughs> it certainly is for London. We, 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 you know, we don't get don't get a lot of Iron Age archaeology. And um, the, I think we got two two coins from the site, the spearhead, a few other small iron items, um, which again, um, it's it's slightly unusual, but we, we don't know at this level. Um, and evidence of trade with Rome, which we've, we've certainly got um, from some of the pottery, and we, we may well have more uh, depending on the depending on what we discover from you know, environmental samples and uh, further analysis of the pottery. So, thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you.